You're listening to the Geekscape Network. Time to fire up the VCR. This one's my favorite. Welcome to Analog Jones in the Temple of Film. I'm Steve. And I'm John. Filling in for Matt. Wow. Hello. You look completely different. <laughs> and I sound different too. All right. This week we are doing a Catherine Bigelow back to back. I don't know. Double feature? Double feature I think is yeah, good word. Sounds good. And we're starting off with the most radical movie ever made. Point Break. Yeah, bruh. On the coast of Southern California, you can only surf, party, and make love for so long before it's time to go to work. Rock and roll! 27 banks in three years. Everybody's free! Anything to catch the perfect wave. I'm not a crook. Patrick Swayze. Man, it makes me think twice about putting money in the bank these days. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. So you think I joined the FBI to learn to surf? Point Break. Adios, amigo! 100% pure adrenaline. <laughs> What a trailer. Holy shit. This movie's awesome. Yeah. I had never watched it before, and I did. And I was like, because I was expecting like it to be super cheesy and everything. But I was like, yeah, I, I, I want to I wanna watch this again. I watched it with Sarah, and this was the first time she had ever watched it. And throughout the entire movie, it was like, oh, my God, this is so stupid. This is dumb. Why are they so dumb? And then at the very end, she's like, I really enjoyed that movie. <laughs> <laughs> It sucks you in. It's stupid, but brah, it's awesome. Yeah, the I really like the way it was shot. I mean, even though half the movie's in slow motion, <laughs> but it's like it's great. It's gorgeous to look at. And that's the way we're gonna do the rest of this podcast. The podcast will be in slow motion. I could actually hear the downloads dwindling. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sound of thousands of people hitting exit on YouTube. You know what I never realized about this movie until watching it this time? Uh, there's two things I didn't realize about the movie. Number one, this is a buddy cop movie, and I don't know why I didn't realize that. And yeah, I didn't make that connection until you said that, actually. Now, if you had to hang out with one man... The rest of your life on an island. You've got three people to choose from. You've got Patrick. Well, he's, he's not alive anymore. But if Patrick Swayze was alive, you could choose between him, Keanu Reeves, or Gary fucking Busey. Well, it could be Patrick Swayze because he was ghost after all. Oh, okay. So he but can, like, can come back. You can choose a live Swayze as Bodie. But if you're choosing dead Swayze, he has to always be a ghost and you can never touch him. I think I'll do Dead Swayze because he'll help me make sandcastles like the clay pottery style. Okay. All right. But you can only watch Point Break. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to choose Keanu Reeves. I want to choose Gary Busey. <laughs> but I feel like his monologues would not help us actually get off the island. <laughs> Keanu Reeves would probably build a fucking boat. Yeah. I feel like Gary Busey would be really fun for about a week and a half, and then it would be the worst thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Gary, shut up! <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. Yeah, about I'm this. angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Keanu would be the most practical, I believe. Yeah. He's safe. Yeah, <laughs> which I can't believe. Out of all these guys, like <laughs> Keanu Reeves is the safe pick. <laughs> okay, uh, some of the details on this. Uh, Directed by Catherine Bigelow, I already said that, but produced by her husband at the time, 
James Cameron. And uh, he, he he's known for some movies. A couple. Yeah. Well, we're not going to talk about him. No. Nah. Because this is about Catherine. Yeah. We're on a first name basis now. She heard about our double feature. And she's like, I'm reaching out to you guys. Just going to say, podcast is great. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. That was actually a, a audio cut that <laughs> yeah. Steve just did. <laughs> Uh, and then we, uh, this is starring, obviously, Patrick Swayze, Keanu Reeves, Gary Busey, and Lori, L- Laura Petty, which is looking fine. Yeah. That was like, I had memories of like, oh yeah, I did have a big crush on her when I was little. Yeah, because you know what? I mostly remember her for Tank Girl. A Tank Girl, uh, a League of Their Own. Oh, yeah. She was yeah. Kit in a League of Their Own. Yeah, that's actually, she, yeah, she's probably more League of I don't know. I don't know. Tank Girl's so fucking weird. Yeah. And I've seen it probably only five times, but I feel like I've seen it a hundred. I've seen it once all the way through and then bits and pieces when it's randomly on. Yeah, that's what happens. You just Tank Girl's too much. (laughs) It's too much for the normal mind. Uh, It's like a a tank bulldozing through your mind. Okay, that joke's going to be erased. (laughs) Pause for editing. (laughs) Well, bruh, that wasn't your best. Um, Thanks, bruh. <laughs> bruh. $24 million budget and made 83 and a half in the box office. And speaking of box office, John, in 1991, another movie was huge in July. Can you name it? I'm going to guess it was Terminator 2. Wow! <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> Uh, the top five movies of July 1991, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, $204 million. Hot Shots, $69 oh, million man. was number two. Number three was 100 in Dalmatians, but it was a reissue. It wasn't like the when they did the live action. Oh, okay. Number four, um, number four, um, number four <laughs> is Boys in the Hood. Oh, I forgot about that movie. Yeah. Never saw it, but I remember the title. Yeah, it made 57 mil, and then we had Point Break, which made 43 mil in July. So it must have, I don't know, maybe, I guess made the rest in August. Or Wikipedia's lying to us. Could be. <gasps> Not Wicca. Why? Do you think people just go on there and make stuff up? No, who would do that? There's got to be, there's more people with so much personal integrity. I hope they don't do that, because that would make this podcast an entire lie. <laughs> <laughs> There's one guy out there fact-checking everything, <laughs> making a list. Yeah. It's like, Analog Drones has been wrong 1,043 times. <laughs> wow, that's it? I, he's, that guy's podcast is going to be Analyze Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Joke works. <laughs> uh. Uh, that's... <laughs> That's actually the third sequel to Analyze This, Analyze That. Analyze Jones? Yeah. yeah. It's Harrison Ford playing uh, oh, What's His Face is Fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're writing a movie as we speak that three people will see. My mom, your mom. <laughs> yes. And <yeah>. a bum. <laughs> Our dads won't go see it. No. They're like, I'm not, no. Not proud of you two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's all we need to know. It's about FBI agents solving a case and surfers and like the spiritual. I don't know. I don't know. Well, like, I, I love Bodie, but I don't understand. He's like, I'm looking for the spiritual ride of a wave. Yeah. He mentions that. He's like, oh, that's called the blah, blah, blah. It's when you're at uh, tune with the way and you're like, I think you're just trying not to fall off. I, Bodie, when he's making that speech to him, <laughs> he kind of is like the drunk guy at the party that won't quit talking to you. <laughs> yeah. And you can't find a way to politely lead the conversation. <laughs> Even if you physically leave, he just follows you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sh- oh that, yeah. He's just, just like a puppy. <laughs> yeah. And he keeps telling you about his stories and you're like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this, this necklace I got... I got this from a piece of bamboo. You see, I wiped out really hard, and it hit me in the skull. So I keep it with me to remind me. (laughs) Put me to fucking sleep, (laughs) random dude at a party that won't shut up. Okay, let's move on to the box art on this. Uh, Not that hard to break down. (laughs) Yeah, not that hard to point break down. Um, He's on fire, folks. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So you got Keanu, and you have uh, Patrick on the front cover. 
Keanu doing the sexy over the shoulder look back with his hair all wet. But then you've got Patrick Swayze in deep thought staring straight through your soul. Yeah, Keanu's a little emotional. Indeed. Yes. Emotional indeed. With his, you know, raised eyebrows. Whoa. Uh, then down at the bottom you have the uh, presidents all floating there. You've got Nixon in his classic pose. I am not a crook prose. And then point break down there at the bottom. Uh, the back, people will have a hard time finding more entertaining thriller. Uh, and that is from Roger Ebert, uh, Siskel and Ebert, back hey, when they were Siskel and Ebert. Yeah. Uh, you got more photos. You got another shot of Nixon with uh, looking down the barrel of the gun. You've got Keanu and Patrick in the air as they're skydiving throughout the scene in their bro handshake in the middle of the air. One of the most bro things you can do. Bro. Bro. Um, and then I usually read the back. Is that what I do? Yeah, or, go ahead. Yeah? Okay. Uh, the back reads a so... Uh, to prepare for this role, Keanu Reeves spent time with real FBI agents, learning how to handle learnt firearms in the LAPD target range, and underwent football training from ULC quarterback coaches. Patrick Swayze, an accomplished skydiver, actually took part in the film's spectacular freefall or ensemble maneuver. Uh, then the breakdown of it is... Uh, Relentless action, breathtaking surf and skydiving cinematography, and the multi-layered performance of Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze make Point Break a high-adrenaline, visually spectacular thriller. Young FBI agent Johnny Utah Reeves undergoes and suggests of his partner, Gary Busey, to learn if a group of wild surfers is actually a gang of bank robbers. He soon comes under the dangerous spell of the surfer's charismatic leader, Bodie, Patrick Swayze, a mystical mastermind of who of who a mystical mastermind who will do absolutely anything anything for a thrill and expects his followers to do the same and that's right. pretty much it yeah let's go let's go robin let's let's get some money first uh, let's talk about the trailers and done cuz there is none <laughs> fuck i did see some on youtube but, oh. but on oh the trailers trailer I oh, sorry I saw the trailers for this on YouTube. Oh yeah not no no trailers no. on the thing. The trailer for this is so nineties. It's amazing. Oh yeah yeah it's great. Um no this the tape I have is a re release. Uh what is that MGM? Uh twentieth century or Fox 20th century, selections. No. Yeah that's it. Um the original one I'm pretty sure had to have trailers, but I guess this re release they're like ah save tape. Everyone knows it. Which is always sad. I, man, we, we've had a really bad uh, string of no trailers. We didn't have any trailers in, I think, yeah, March, which was actually nicknamed Noarch because we did our <laughs> Noir movies. Yeah, yeah, it was a bad run, and uh, this one's not starting off too good either, but at least the movie's badass. Yeah. So feature presentation time. And now, our feature presentation. This movie throws you right into, like, He's, they introduce you to um, Johnny Utah, and he's at a, I don't know, cop FBI practicing range where he's just yeah. like shooting everything. Yeah, it seems like it's and like it's his, crazy. like like the physical tryouts that he's yeah. got to like shoot out stuff to be get like into the FBI or whatever rank he is. Yeah, and it's raining. It's all yeah. dramatic. Yeah. And Sarah comes in right when this is starting. She goes, whoa, I didn't know he was ever in that good a shape. <laughs> I was like, whoa, calm down Then she here. decided to watch the movie. Yeah. I see what's happening here. And it's a long movie, too. you got to commit. This is over a two-hour movie, uh, 122 minutes. Yeah. So it's no joke. When you sit down to watch Utah. It's, it's like driving through the whole state of Utah to watch this movie. I don't. That's. I'm pretty sure that's longer. Yeah, that's probably not Why are accurate. you lying to the listeners? Uh, well, I mean, well, I, I read it on Wikipedia. So. Oh, it's accurate then. Never <laughs> it's mind. accurate, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's an FBI agent, which I did not notice. Every time I've watched this film, I don't know why. I just thought he was a cop. And this time I finally noticed. I go, oh, he's an FBI agent. Oh, uh, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> I don't know why. I just never caught it. But then we're introduced to the ex-presidents that rob banks. And they only yeah. take what's out of the drawers. And they've, I don't know how many banks they've hit, but it was a lot. Yeah, I can't remember they were, they think at one time, say at the beginning. But what's kind of neat, at the very beginning, it's it, the music's really slow, and it's very kind of atmospherical, and it, it's cutting back between them surfing and then Johnny Utah firing at a bunch of targets. 
And they're going yeah, back, yeah. back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. So it kind of gets you into the uh, Patrick Swayze, like, inner peace with the ocean while you're serving kind of thing. And then changes to the high octane once the yeah. once they rob the bank. Yeah, it's pretty sweet uh, when you see it. Uh, Bodie plays Ronald Reagan, which was Patrick Swayze. Uh, and then the rest of them have very interesting names. Let me see here. Here we go. We've got uh, Roach is Richard Nixon. Uh, Nathaniel is Jimmy Carter. And Gormit, or Gromit, is it, is it Gromit? I don't remember them saying these names. I remember Bodie, but I think everyone else, they just... I don't remember. Yeah, Roach, Nathaniel, and maybe Gromit. Uh, I don't know. Let's just say Gromit, because that reminds me of... Yeah. Yeah, let's say Gromit. Jeez. Um, Yes. (laughs) Lyndon B. Johnson, that's who he plays. Which, I think Sarah asked me who that was. And I was like, Oh, yeah? Lyndon B. Johnson, the president took over for JFK. (laughs) She just looks at me blankly, and I go, He was on an HBO show? Just played. Never mind. No. Uh, no. Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, From Texas. Nope. Doesn't matter. Who's the okay. one? Forrest Gump mooned in Forrest Gump. That's right. Jesus <laughs> Christ, son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd but, very much like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he meets his partner, which is played by the lovely Gary Busey, FBI agent Angelo Papas. Yeah, I think you're right. Papas. I don't know. Some whatever. Uh, and he's awesome. Yeah. He, he is a older cop who's like, not a cop, sorry, older FBI agent who's just kind of like tired of the bullshit. Yeah. It almost seems like he's ready to retire, but he can only be in his forties at this point. Yeah. So. It seems like he's like, he's found his like little Nick where he can just like ride out and get like the bare minimum to keep his job, but also doesn't do a whole lot at the same time. Yeah. And I think that's when they, they give up. Uh, Patrick Swayze, uh, not Patrick Swayze, Johnny Utah, you know, is his partner now, and Utah wants to rise to the top. Yeah. So he's got to go with him, and then he just, like, when he's looking for them, when he's just like, are you mad? <laughs> yeah, I'm mad! <laughs> yeah, I, he's that, got those speeches, yeah, that are great. Well, maybe I can do better than some over-the-hill burnout. Hey, watch your mouth. Maybe you ought to just take some early retirement right now and get some rent-a-cop night security job. Tell mom stories. Listen, you snot those little shit. I was taking shrapnel and caisson while you were crapping it in your hands and rubbing it on your face. You mad? Yeah, I'm mad. You're good and mad. Yeah. What do you want to do about it? It feels good, doesn't it? Like you're still alive, right? Yeah. Well, since you're still alive and you're not in the box just yet, why don't you tell me this theory of yours and we'll go get these guys? <sighs> okay, hot shot. You want to nail the bank robbers? And be a big hero. Definitely. Definitely. Then here it is. The ex-presidents are surfers. That entire speech just like pumps pumps me up for the rest of the movie. I'm like, <laughs> damn. And it wasn't even like a pure Busey monologue. It was an argument. Yeah. And it's great. I love it. So they get into all this and we get introduced to Dr. Cox. Yeah. At He's only only known as Doctor Cox. No matter what what role he is in a movie, it's that's who he is. His name John C. McGinley has actually changed his name to Doctor yeah, Cox legally. Yes, according to Wikipedia, here it says that he yes. legally changed his name. Yes, <laughs> uh, and there it is. There, wow, look at that. Uh, yeah, he's awesome. He just basically yells this entire movie. Yeah, uh, he's but, like the R-rated version of Doctor Cox. It's amazing. I love mm-hmm. it. I just want him to get down and like. Start just do one of the and eh, when he just makes fun of JD. <laughs> yeah, the when he does yeah. the whistles, I was yeah. expecting him to do that. Uh, I love it. Listen here, Sally. <laughs> so, uh Busey explains to uh Utah that he thinks they're surfers because they found like, I don't know, wax and stuff on shoe prints or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that was uh it had they had all the same compounds from like every. Yeah, it's a bunch of science mumbo jumbo, yeah. and I, I, when that comes on the screen, I, it, my mind blacks out, <laughs> and I wake up and I go, "What happened?" <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, Johnny Utah's like, "You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna become a surfer." Yeah, and it gets the like most childish, 
90s surfboard I've ever it seen. Looks like, it looks like uh, Marty McFly's Mattel like surfboard. It looks like that's a, it's exactly like neon, what it looks, yeah, yeah, it's like neon green, neon pink. Oh, that's awesome. It's so lovely. And then uh, he ends up meeting... Uh, he goes surfing and almost drowns, right? Yeah. And then Tyler saves him. Yeah. And this movie becomes... Yeah, she drags him out. She's like, you're going to drown. You don't deserve to be out here. And then she sees his board and she's like, yeah, you definitely don't deserve to be out here. Yeah. And then she just goes straight back out and he's smitten right away. Well, wouldn't we all? Oh, yeah. And she works at a restaurant? Like a hole in the... I don't even know what yeah, it was. Yeah, what was it? It's like, yeah, she had to... She's like inside of it. She doesn't like come out. It's like a like a walk-up yeah. place. Like off the beach or something. Yeah, you just walk up, grab your food, and like stand and eat it. Yeah. I guess that was popular in California at the time. I don't know. But sure. She uh, finally agrees to train him to surf because he ends up finding out that she is an orphan. So he makes up a story that his parents died... Oh yeah, he was. I think he was. He made up the story about being a lawyer, and then like uh, he quit. Yeah, or went yeah, to yeah. Law school. Yeah, something. He, yeah, he went into law after he got his football injury, which that part is true. Yeah. In his in his storyline. Yeah. Yes, because the real Johnny Utah was a quarterback for Ohio State. Yeah. Sure. Whatever. We'll <laughs> go with that. <laughs> you uh, would think yeah. it's Utah, but no, that's not. No, right. no, no. It's just a clever name. Mm-hmm. And Johnny Utah is based off the football player Joe Montana. Yeah. That's interesting. That's a fun tidbit. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like, did they think they were being clever with that? Like, Joe, Johnny, Montana, Utah. Done. Done. That's that's in the West. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I want to say since that movie, since Point Break, there's been no other character with the last name of a state. Sure. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> there's a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm just going to be bold and say that's fact. And we'll put it on Wikipedia. Yeah. Then it will be fact. There you go. Uh, yeah. So he goes, um, he gets like into these groups searching all over for surfers like the one where he's looking for the hair from yeah they're the just games. going around yeah. like you, bro you got a spider in your hair rips out a chunk of this <laughs> yeah. dude's hair it's like oh man leave some of my hair behind <laughs> and gary Busey goes by and just literally cuts some <laughs> yeah, off he with just scissors. doesn't even give a shit he goes up to two guys smoking weed and just cuts his hair and walks yeah. away uh yeah and then, who are like so, yeah then they're under the blanket doing it and like mm-hmm. they lift it up in this giant cloud like really what just happened Whoa. uh so yeah they're searching for him and it, it, he's looking at two different groups he looks at one that has the lead singer from red hot chili uh the red hot chili peppers and anthony um uh, what's what was his it? last name Ky- kytus kytus something something like that Something. I don't know. Whatever. I, I do know that he really wanted to fight in the scene where he, like, the... Yeah. Well, because they were... He ran into them in while he was surfing, and then yeah. they, like, kind of tried to drown and him. And that huge dude war child. Yeah. yeah. Huge. He's and it was, massive. like, their turf, and he was like, quit going to the turf, man. But they, they were, were maniacs. Protective. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They weren't into, like, the spiritual part of surfing. They were just psycho. Yeah, they, like, met him at the, like, beach shower and were like, hey, we've come to kick your ass, pretty much. Yeah, but uh, Anthony Cletus um, didn't show up on time for the rehearsals of the fight. So that's why he gets knocked out immediately. Oh, really? Because the stunt coordinator is like, you don't show up, you're not in the fight. That's awesome. And apparently um, he never showed up late again the rest of the movie. Good for him. But, uh, yeah, so he, he suspects it's them, and then um, he sleeps with Tyler and shows up late to his own uh, when they're going to get this group. Yeah. They're going to, like, go through the house and try to arrest him, and Gary, Gary Busey walks up to the door and he's like, Hey, have you seen my dog? Like, I, <laughs> yeah. crack, I don't like just crack up. <laughs> because also the girl is the most 80s. Oh, but yeah. I have ever seen. Yeah, it. she's completely out of like a like a white snake video or something yes. like that. She's in a black bikini with the super high like way uh-huh. past her like hip bones sides. Yeah, super eighties butt sticking out, and that shot is there specifically just so you can yeah. see it. Yes, because this is shot by a woman who I, I think Catherine Bigelow does a really good job of like selling her movies, some of her movies, on just. 
It's like dripping with sex appeal. <laughs> yeah. Like she's better at it than most men. And I don't know why, but she is because the testosterone and sex appeal in this movie yeah. is just absurd. Yeah. It's everybody is like super chiseled. Uh, even when Keanu Reeves is shooting at the beginning of the movie, his like shirt is soaking wet and cling tight and showing off his back muscles and it's all mm-hmm. shiny and gleaming and everything. And that's when Sarah walked in and she was like, uh, oh, oh. oh. What, is, what is this? You knew I was watching it. Don't react <laughs> like that. Did she pull out a fan and just start fanning herself? Like, she, I she, say. I got the vapors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my word. <laughs> oh, my. Mr. Reeves. What's this movie called? Keanu Reeves. And Keanu I'm, Reeves in the sun. Is, is wet. Is glistening in the sunshine. <laughs> I do declare. That's pretty much accurate. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what we said. That was transcribed. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And you're scaring me with your ability to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he breaks into it and almost dies via a lawnmower. Yeah. The big dude's got him, like, pushed down. And, like, it's one of those, you know, his face is inching closer and closer to the blades so it looked like a push lawn mower a manual one yeah but they like stuck an engine in it yeah i thought that was weird too uh, it's I've funny never seen that, up. that i haven't either yeah totally like an old one that had like that uh kind of like barbershop like yeah. spiral blade thing going on but it was it was mechanical like it was like it was run by an engine very odd yeah um, and it was able to be run even though no one was holding it and like the yeah. end was sticking up Somehow, I maybe I, I don't know. Maybe those existed in the eighties. I I've never seen them. Uh, whatever, but it yeah. was cool. He almost gets his uh, face eaten up by it. But uh, Gary Busey saves him from War Child right before. Yeah, he shoots the engine off. Yeah. I was like, that was actually really smart. <laughs> yeah, damn Gary Busey, <laughs> you're really smart. Uh, but uh, th- yeah, that's the part where Anthony or no wait, I think the character's name was Tone. Sure. War child and tone. Tone because he's a musician. Oh, probably. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then and tone shoots himself in the foot. Yeah, he does. And Someone it like, like opens the more... door on him, and it like makes some fire yeah. on his foot. <laughs> he's, ah! And his and his foot like explodes. Yeah, that squib was awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he shoots himself in the foot. He goes down. He, his reaction is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and then they find out like it's just drugs and guns. And oh, it was a bunch of cocaine, and there was already an undercover uh, guy on it. Yeah. Tom Sizemore, yeah. who plays the DE agent, who is in um, the next Catherine Bigelow movie, Strange Days. Oh. Ah. Yeah, so she liked Tom Sizemore. I mean, who doesn't? He's She he gives Sizemore a him up for another role? I don't know. No? That, that, mm, yeah. Sounded better in my head. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I wish you'd come... With, uh, fuck, fuck, it's, it's spreading. <laughs> I was going to say, I wish you'd come with size more jokes. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> it's like a Yoda way of saying it, where the yeah. words are all backwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jokes sound funny, they are not. Mm-hmm. Size more your jokes are? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to cut everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that was... You know, so it looks like Johnny Utah and uh, the, the team is going to go down. Yeah, because they, they didn't do their homework and yeah. they ruined some guy who had been undercover for months. He had to get his hair cut and get a tattoo. He was freaking out about it, I remember. Yeah, yeah. whatever, Tom Sizemore. You get know, over it. You knew what you were signing up for, Sizemore. When you put that name on the dotted line, you knew you could get that <laughs> tattoo. Uh, so they end up, I don't know how... He figures out that it's Bodhi in them. He, uh... Oh, he wait, they bust them. him. So when the, the hot dog, when he goes, Utah, give me two. Two. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, they were at a stakeout. They're going against the rules and doing a stakeout anyway because they noticed a pattern of all the places they were hitting were where the tide was. Yeah. And, and so they good, went against the rule. Cool. Yeah. And so they decided to go sit out at the next, uh, what they thought the next bank was. And then, yeah, Johnny goes off and he's sitting there ordering hot dogs. And behind him, the car pulls up and they all jump out and run in the bank. Yeah. He's completely unaware. But I, I guess Utah figures out because he looks at him. 
Oh, he doesn't figure out that it's for sure Bodie. Yeah. Until the chase. Yeah. So they actually bust them at one of the banks and it turns into or is that when it turns into a total chase? Well, it's because he gets um it's when they're at there's like the gas station scene and they're like right up on them at that time because they were in the car chase and they're hitting oh, each other. Oh when he burns the gas yeah, station. And he's sitting down. there, yeah, and he's burning the gas station with a giant torch and it's uh somehow that it's given away to him. I can't remember how it is now. Yeah, I watched the movie weeks ago. I just remember the badass scenes. And yeah. yes, when he takes the uh, the pump and just sets the gasoline on fire and sprays it. It's so badass. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible, and I don't care. Yeah. It's cool. I also wondered if that was supposed to be like a like a political thing because it was... Because he still had the yeah, Nixon Reagan's mask just, on, and he's just... Or Reagan, Reagan yeah. yeah it was Reagan's Reagan. just burning the place down. Yeah, you're like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, if it was written by a Democrat, yeah, I'm sure that's what it exactly was. Or, you know, how the presidents are robbing us, you know, like taxation. Uh, yeah. You could look into it a lot of different ways. I'm sure. But honestly, I just think they liked it because it was cool. Yeah, it looked cool. And then that, sh- then immediately is the chase, and that chase was awesome. That chase is like so many long one cuts that are intense. And that's not even Patrick Swayze. Yeah, that's a stunt guy. Yeah, because Patrick Swayze was off promoting ghosts. Yeah, he ghosted out of that performance. That there time. we go. Hey, back I'm on. Back. <laughs> back on top. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you think about that one before? No, I just, okay. I just that was for the moment. That one came on you. Mm-hmm. I, I, it came all over you. Oh, yeah. oh. that's not right. <laughs> um, what's wrong with this podcast? <laughs> so that's awesome. I love it. And they end up kidnapping uh tyler which yeah. and then the video they send yeah that's is messed fucked up. up well they what's weird is like so so and then oh you got the cl- at the end of the chase you got that classic shot where keanu's got the busted knee he's lying there he can't run anymore yeah. and he's looking at him and they lock eyes from far away and he's got his gun drawn him and then decides at the last minute not to fire on him and just in anger, unloads his entire clip Looks to the sky. Goes, yeah, yeah. Gah, gah, gah. Which is in Hot Fuzz. They do that in Hot Fuzz as a montage, and it's homage, not a montage. Yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, we're drinking some fine beer here. Oh yeah. So sometimes we're giggling and messing up, but it doesn't matter. We're having a blast. And, Freebird uh, what, in what the is... style of Freebird from uh, the Beguile. Beguile. I don't know. I can't. Beguile. Read talk. We're really good at reading. Yeah, reading. Beguile Breweries. Freebird. It's an American IPA. And it's quite... I, I like it. Yeah, it's great stuff. It's not over hoppy. We were expecting, though, to like hear the sounds of Leonard Skinner come yeah. screaming out when we opened the can and to instantly have mullets just you know glistening in the sun and blowing in the wind. But Yeah, we didn't even get a guitar solo. No. Not even. And not, I'm free. Yeah. yeah I, just like a... Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> just get that stuck in people's heads. Yeah, <laughs> fucking. I listen to Analog Jones today. And now all I hear is Freebird. <laughs> <laughs> you should edit that in here where we go and you just play a snippet of yeah. Freebird. <laughs> Maybe I will. Uh, so then yes. they have to take this down for copyright reasons. Yeah, well, if you play about five seconds, after five seconds, they will fucking flag you. <laughs> they don't mess around. But they, yeah, they kidnap Tyler. Well, they had a like they had a more bromance scene before that because uh, they. Oh, you're invite... talking about the house party? <clears throat> no, that's no? before. This is so now they both know that each other's like. So now they meet up. Uh, Johnny Utah goes and meets them. And uh, he's like yeah. about he doesn't know if they figured it out that it was him or not. And there's kind of this like uh, everybody knows who each other is, but they're not talking about yeah, it. And they like decide a, to go skydiving. You call that a cat and mouse game? Is that what that is? Sure. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But everyone knows. But yeah, but no one's talking about yeah. it. And they're all in close quarters. They take him up and they go skydiving. He's never Johnny Utah's never been skydiving. They have like a blast. They land, and then all of a sudden he's like, "Hey, let me show you something." And then 
takes him to the van and turns on this live feed fo- like video of her being tied up and all that stuff. Do you remember when they're like, oh, you don't trust that pack? Here, I pack this one personally. And they all oh, switch yeah. packs. I, I get what they were doing there, but it just felt awkward. Yeah. Oh, you don't like that one? Take this one. No, 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 I'll take that one. It was like all over. And I'm trying to figure out at the very end, did he have the same pack? Yeah, I didn't like, yeah, that was totally like the ball underneath the cups thing. Yeah. And I, I, I lost track, but uh, for me, I thought it was because, you know, I think Johnny's looking at like, oh, are they giving me the yeah. one that's not packed right? So they're going to kill me. And I think they're making fun of him. Because he's starting to chicken out and worry yeah. about dying, and so they're like, "Oh no, I get no, do this, no, no, do that." No, I don't think Bodhi would do that. That's not how you kill someone. It would have to be, it's it's not right. So I don't think Bodhi would do that. He wouldn't allow the group to do it. But he would lie his, you know, dying friend with giant bullet wounds, yeah. oozing out to jump out of or to throw him out of a plane <laughs> at the very end. Yeah. I don't know that. I, I honestly, their names. I don't. I don't know who they are. I don't yeah, know. the other ones. Like I can't. If you showed me, I'd be like, I don't know who is who. Roach? I just know. Yeah, sure. Um, and they're all, all the, blonde surfer dudes. Yeah, they all could surf. Yeah, that's yeah. They're cool. actual surfers. That's badass. Um, and whichever one, I don't know if it was. I want to. Maybe it was. Shit. Which one was in Return of the Living Dead? Um, the Christopher one? It wasn't uh, the Something Christopher. Christopher. No. Who's the other guy? I think it was John um, Philbin. John Landis? John Landis? That's it. That's <laughs> it. No, yeah, I think it was John um, Philbin. But whatever. One of them was in uh, Return of the Living Dead. And I yelled right when I noticed it. I was like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> John uh, Philbin, yeah. Yep. They end up trying to pull the last... A job, but they ended up going to the safe. See, the whole thing that made them like very good at robbing these banks and then taking off and going to the next wave, whatever country, mm-hmm. was they only took the money in the tills. Yeah. But for some reason, so this they're last like in and out job, out of ninety seconds. Yeah, and this last job, he wanted the extra money. I don't know if it was because because he was trying to get to the ultimate wave in Australia. It seemed that way. Well. Yeah, that wasn't necessarily clear. No, I don't think it was either. He just like wanted the ultimate score, I guess. Yeah, he, I think he was just trying to up the ante and yeah. make it more like a, of a thrill ride. And uh, there happens to be a undercover cop or an uh-huh. off-duty cop. I don't remember which yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Who's on the floor? He tries to stop him. He ends up dead. I think the security guard ends up dead too. Maybe. Yeah, yeah he's lying next to the security guard. And he's like, yeah. "All right, I'm gonna go and go. You got my back." And He's like, no, man. <laughs> yeah, because the the undercover, or the off-duty cop, shoots. He shoots and gets one of them. I want to say he shoots Roach. I think Roach is the last one. Okay. And who ends up, uh, you know, jumping out of the plane with basically dead. Well, he's... No, no, because Roach, one of them is left dead there at the... Uh... So that's got to be... Um, Lyndon B. Johnson dies. Yeah. Gromit. Okay. And then, um, cause then it's when they're at the airfield, he walks out and there's like the fire between Gary Busey and all of them. Okay. And then he gets sewn yeah. in the plane with the bullet wound then. Okay. So, uh, the other cops come and basically it seems like, uh, Keanu Reeves, Johnny Utah is going to lose his job. Oh yeah. We didn't say, so because they've got Johnny by the balls in a way, because he, cause he doesn't want tyler to get hurt they're like you have to come with us and once you help us do this job we'll you know let her go yeah gary Busey and utah go to the field strip or go to the, well, the I mean, airstrip johnny goes on them with that heist with the president so yeah he's yeah, not he has, wearing like, uh, he's not wearing a he's mask he's not becoming part of the gang he's but just, he's, he's like forced yeah. yeah he's forced to be and then so he gets busted but, for that yeah but when the cops come and like he had his vest on that's why he survived the gunshot wound mm-hmm. And they're basically, you're you're done. You're done yeah. in this department. Yeah. He's just like, whatever. I don't care. Mm-hmm. And then him and Busey like decide to not go back to the department. Yeah. And they go to the the airstrip. Yeah. He's like, I know where they're going. Yeah. I think I know where they are. And problem I gotta is, save Tyler. Problem is, we can't shoot them and we can't arrest them. What do we? And do? then Gary Busey's like, what? And then it does a cut. Yeah. 
And then it really sucks because at the end of this movie, it makes me sad. When the entire gang ends up dead, I'm sad. Yeah. And then the ultimate sadness comes and hits Steve like an like an avalanche. When Gary Busey dies, <laughs> I forget every time he dies, and I'm like, no! <laughs> it's so traumatic that you like <laughs> you suppress it. Yeah. Forget about it. As soon as this podcast is over, it will be gone again. <laughs> yeah. When I watch the movie next year, I'll be like, no! So if you ever run into Steve, just tell him Gary Busey dies. <laughs> Wherever you're at, he'll no! fall down. Yeah, scream at the heavens. Yes. Yeah, I'll do the like the platoon on the cover yeah. of the platoon. Yeah. No! <laughs> Exactly. It's a sad day. When Gary Busey dies in a movie, an angel loses its wings. It <laughs> just falls right out of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like that angel didn't have a parachute. Probably because Bodie didn't pack it. Hey. There you go. Um, so, so, yeah, it's sad. But Bodie gets away. And, yeah. and But that awesome fall when... Keanu Reeves has the gun. That huge, massive yeah. magnum. Yeah, it's like a magnum, yeah. I don't know. It's totally like the Clint Eastwood, make my day. Yeah. Like, it's, it's totally that gun. Like, the extended barrel. It's huge. Yeah. That thing's got to weigh, like, I don't know, 10 pounds. I think that's what helped weigh Keanu to get down to them faster. <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, they jump out with parachutes. Keanu, he goes like, fuck it, and jumps out after them without mm-hmm. one, which was pretty cool. No, it's awesome. that I don't... Which, as soon as he, like, as soon as Patrick Swayze threw the gun down, I was like, he's going to grab it and he's going to jump out without a yeah. pair. I was like, yes. Sarah yelled. She's like, what is he doing? <laughs> Sarah, he's being a hero. He's being a hero. He's being the hero we need. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not right now. <laughs> what is the Batman? Yeah, uh, he's the one. He's not the one we deserve. But, but he's the, the one, one we, we need. need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just jumps out the plane. Utah! <laughs> I ho- I feel like if your name's Johnny Utah, you got to shout Utah whenever you do something epic. Or like his teacher when they're doing roll call. And it's like, Utah! <laughs> like every <Yeah>. time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he just raises his hands like... <sighs> Pretty sure I'd get fired if I was a teacher. I'd just yell everyone's name. (laughs) (laughs) Or I would find somebody's to mispronounce on purpose, and they would correct me and be like, oh, and then the next class they'd still pronounce it wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah, you would definitely do that. Mm -hmm. They uh, end up pulling the chute at the basic, I don't know, the the last Yeah, he's counting down. You got six seconds. I'm pretty sure they'd be broken. Oh, yeah. Don't they crash into the water? Uh, no, that's, uh... Is that the first jump? Yeah, that's the first jump. Yeah. This one, they just crashed the ground. I'm pretty sure, like, everything would be broken. Yeah, because the minimum, and they made it sound like they did it just, like, hundreds of feet in the air. Yeah. And they even look like they fall really hard, too. Yeah, whoever the stunt doubles were, I hope they got paid well. Oh, yeah. That looks painful. They paid for each knee replacement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Uh, yeah, so they end up getting uh, Tyler back. From whatever the crazy guy who records him, which I think he was in Wayne's World. Oh, like one of the roadies? Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, and maybe Airheads? Oh, yeah. Maybe. I think, maybe. Uh, yeah, so, but he looks unhinged in this movie at certain parts. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you know what we gotta do? We gotta kidnap his girl. Oh, yeah. Doesn't he kind of, um, Patrick's character, Bodie, talks about that. Yeah. He's like, he doesn't like he's, it. Like, he's talking about, like, he's with Johnny and he's kind of talking to, like, introducing them from afar. And he's like, that's Roach. He's a little this and little that. And then he's got this way. So they, like, balance each other out. And it's like, you know, all. Yeah. He's doing all his introductions, which we didn't even, but we'll get to the end of this. Uh, We go fade to black, Bodie gets away, and then one year later, Johnny Utah finds him, I'm doing air quotes, on the beach of Australia for the ultimate wave. Yeah. And Utah comes Well, which is mentioned earlier in the film. Yeah. That's the ultimate thing. There's going to be a big storm in Australia, Mm -hmm. biggest storm in like 50 50 years. Yeah, every 50 years it comes by. It's it's actually not shot in Australia, we found out. John and I got the bad news. It was shot in Oregon. Yeah. But it looks it looks pretty uh gnarly. Uh Yeah, the, it has nice like it's kind of cliffy with a bunch of woods, so it's kind of like in a cove and a little bit. Australian cops yelling. Yeah. Hey mate, you can't go out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> about as stereotypical Australian yeah. as you can. And then uh, what's he doing? I don't know. <laughs> He's gonna die. <laughs> We'll get him when he comes back. Yeah. I don't think he is coming yeah. back. He's not coming back. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I know. He's got his long, like, uh, Bill and Ted hair. Yeah, soaked from the rain. It's raining big. He's in his denim jacket. Yeah, I wonder if that was a wig or if that was his real hair. I I honestly did not pay attention. Yeah. But he's, yeah, he's definitely in his Canadian tuxedo. Well, it could have, yeah, grown longer to show the passage of time, yeah. maybe. But he's just like, And yeah. him becoming more of a surfer instead of his, you know... Yeah, because he ends up throwing his uh, badge in the water. Yeah, he ends up quitting. Yeah, he's like, "Hey, buddy, you kind of go out there, man." And he like (laughs) he handcuffs him to himself. And Bodie, well, after they fight a little, he's like, "You got to come in." And he's like, "I'm not going." And so they fight, and then yeah, he snaps the cuffs on him, and then the the backup comes, and he's like, "I can't go in a cage, man. You gotta let me ride." And he does. He lets him go uh, to go out there and die. Yeah. And uh, that's how the movie ends. And it it's a fucking, it's a rock show. Yeah. He's walking in the rain and then walks like off camera. Yeah. And then you got a wailing 80s guitar solo going on. This is, yeah, this is definitely a time when, when I saw this, I was like, Keanu Reeves is a star. Oh, yeah. And then, well, then I... He goes on to do, like, what, Speed? Speed, yeah. He kind of started him as an action guy for a while. He did yeah. Speed and then the Matrix movies, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I love him. I love Bill and Ted. Uh, I even love Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. But when you watch him in that, you you worry, like, ah, you know, can this guy do this? Like, is he a one, one-trick one pony? And then he's yeah. in this movie and, and Speed, and you're like, this dude's a star. <laughs> and then he sets the world on fire with Matrix. Oh yeah, and I still like remember the, seeing yeah. that, like everything, seeing that in the theater. My dad and I. He's quiet, and I'm trying to figure out if he doesn't like it or not. And as soon as the, as soon as Keanu comes flying up at the screen and the credits roll, my dad goes, "That was fucking awesome." <laughs> There's a couple movies I remember seeing in the theater that like gave me theater chills, mm-hmm. where I watched them and they. They just made me a movie fan. One, obviously, one is Jurassic Park. Yeah, which blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get to see no um, Star Wars when they re-released them. Uh, New Hope when they re-released them in like ninety four, ninety five. Okay, the special editions. Yeah, that gave me chills. Yeah, because I had never seen it. Um, Matrix. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's more, but the the end of the Dark Knight. That was one where yeah, he is yeah. the Dark Knight, and it go and he like drives off, and it cuts the black. I was like, "Oh shit, I love movies." <laughs> yeah, that, that's a that's such a good comic. I don't even consider that a comic book movie. Yeah, it's I agree. Like a different level of it's, yeah. it's like a crime noir. Well, I think yeah, yeah, because it's such based in reality, but you know, sort of. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. It's like grounded. Yeah, even though it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> It's a man running around in like a million dollar bat suit. Yeah. I'm sure that could happen. <laughs> He'd yeah. be dead immediately. <laughs> like his second one, his second like bank, he tries, you know, bank robbery. Yeah. He gets shot in the face. Like, yeah. Shit. Should have wore a better mask. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was a good idea. You shot him right where no mask was at. Yeah, man. Uh, as a kid, I did that all the time, even though I loved comics and I was in love with Batman. Yeah. I always thought, I was like, why doesn't anyone shoot him in the face? That's funny. Have you seen Shazam yet? Oh, Shazam's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he does it. <laughs> we, we don't know if the suit's bulletproof or your face. Shoot him in the face. And he goes, yeah, yeah shoot me wait, in the face. Wait, wait what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Shazam is very good, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay, maybe we'll talk about that at the end of, okay. after the museum. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, we didn't talk about the football scene. The football scene just makes me want to be a man. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the Top Gun volleyball scene yeah. of the 90s. But a little less gay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because the Top Gun scene is just... It's so super gay. It's so, especially when Tom Cruise is in the uh, changing room in his tidy whities Yeah. And he's like, just got his back to the camera <laughs> with his leg up on a bench yeah. like, looking at a piece of paper on the wall. And I'm like, why are you doing that? <laughs> Who cares? That's There's, why. <laughs> and it's uh, it's Iceman's 
co-pilot. I don't know who that guy is, but yeah, he does like this ripped. spike, yeah. and then he does this like the... ridiculous pose, and it's there for no reason. She's just like, look, I'm muscular, and I'm like just covered in oil. Yeah. <laughs> oil I'm smoke. a bronze statue gleaming in the sun. Oh, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, anything else in this we forgot we, to mention? Uh, oh, there's the party. So, uh, Are you so... talking about the dress? Yes. You're talking about Tyler's dress, right? I see. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know I liked tight ninety early 90s dresses until I saw that one. Yeah. I, I think this is the best she looks in like movies from, from memory. From memory. Because this is the it... most fresh I've seen. Most of the time, she's very much being a um, kind of very tomboy-ish. unique. Yeah, maybe a little tomboyish. Well, well at the League of Your Own, yeah. Tank Girl, she's got a very unique look. Oh yeah, this one she's got the rock and roll, the rock and roll look. Yeah, she's like, oh, she's changing out of her wetsuit on the beach, and Keanu's just creeping on her. <laughs> yeah, I know it. he is too. <laughs> He's just not hiding, just physically standing there staring at her. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, she's got the towel around her. Yeah, she puts on, like, the... They're not super short shorts, but they're, like, jeans. Just with, like, a bathing suit top. Hops in the back of her Jeep. Boom, goes blaring off on her Jeep. Yeah. And, and he's... Oh, in a perfect mode for... Whoa. <laughs> and this movie also has, like, the um, Beverly Hills. You know, Beverly Hills, they were cops. And, like, when Axel Foley goes... To California, like all the LA cops have all the fancy gear and computers and everything. Yeah. This and the FBI headquarters, like when they're looking for all the stuff, they had all the computers. You could hear them all typing and they're like, oh, you know, that's got doing all the forensic stuff yeah. in the 90s. And I don't, that was a thing for a short while. Like if you went to California, they had all the cool shit. Yeah. And I feel like the East Coast was like still gritty, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like. We don't use computers. It's like it hasn't made yeah. it all the way out there yet. We don't use computers. We do our work the old-fashioned way. Yeah. Nose to the grindstone. We find clues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just like, what? Uh huh. It's like, yeah, but the computer's better. <laughs> <laughs> and it's totally the and they re- did a good job of the juxtaposition of whenever that the F- FBI place there was like no windows. It was like super dark indoors almost. Yeah. And then when they're outside, it's always bright and sunny and, like, wide open. And very, very pretty. Everything mm-hmm. was pretty. Yeah. Even the Lots extras of, in yeah. the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like L.A. is just, it must, like, pretty people just fall off trees. <laughs> it's just like. They do, and then they're like, oh, and then someone's like, oh, hey, you want to be in a movie? And they're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and they just wake up. Well, I'm not right. doing anything right now. <laughs> All right, cool. Am I a surfer? <laughs> awesome. But hey, if you don't show up for the choreography for the fight scene, you're not going to be in it. What? <laughs> what time does it start? 8 a.m.? Oh, I man, wonder... I don't wake up till 2 p.m. <laughs> I wonder if there's a Chili's Pepper song referencing that. Like, I don't know. I hope so. Someone find that out for us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not listening to all their songs. They probably have a lot of filler. Yeah. Because you're just thinking of the hits, and then there's, what, 10, 8, 10 I've... other tracks on every I, I album? I feel like they have like 12 albums. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's head off to the museum. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh wait, wait! Before we do it, uh, no, we should read off the uh, ten awesome facts. Yeah. That we got from YouTube. Uh, this Australian guy does like ten things you don't know about a movie. It's kind of and... like there's a there's another. It's like CineFX or um, Looper or something like that on YouTube. Yeah, does a ten things you didn't know probably. This uh, movie originally is going to be based on skateboarding. Yeah. I, see, they're way too old for skateboarding. Yeah, I agree. And it wouldn't have fit in with like his character. There's no like guru, uh, like inner peace guy on a skateboard. Well, yeah, I feel like his like yeah his the spiritualism comes from the water. Right. There's something about rebirth with it. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe I don't know. Like it cleans you. It cleanses you. Yeah. I feel like yeah, a skateboarding just doesn't think. It just leave that to the turtles. Yeah. Yeah. The original title of this was either going to be Johnny Utah mm-hmm. or Riders of the Storm. Which, well, that, and they said, like, that can make sense because they're talking about the 50 year storm. Yeah. But, but then you'd have to use the Doors song. Yeah. It's just really slow. Not paced for this movie. No, this movie's fucking rock and roll. Yeah. High adrenaline octane, yeah. looking for the next, like, thrill. 
Yeah, and Johnny Utah doesn't make any sense because this movie's just as much Bodies. Yeah, definitely. So they ended up calling it Point Break about halfway through. And I, I think Point Break is like, that's a surfer's term of right. where the wave is at the time. I think like, where it hits the, where it hits, I think when it actually hits, uh, when it actually hits the water, when the wave touches the water, I love at the end of it, I think that's the point break. Two Midwestern saying. guys talking about <laughs> waves. We don't know shit. <laughs> originally, Charlie Sheen was going to be played by, well, originally they were going to shoot this movie all the way back in 87. Yeah, it took a while for yeah. it to go through. It took a while to materialize into what it is today, uh, but it was going to maybe be played by uh, Charlie Sheen, mm-hmm. Johnny Depp, Val Kilmer, or Matthew Broderick. And I think Broderick was the favorite in 87. Yeah, coming off of Ferris Bueller. Yeah, that would have not, and then, uh, That uh, would have been a total different movie. Originally, Patrick Swayze read for yeah. Johnny Utah. But didn't want it because yeah. he wanted Bodie. And then yeah. saw the script and then, yeah, wanted Bodie. I'm a Bodie. I'm a Bodie. Yeah, his hair is ridiculous in this movie. Yeah, it's exactly what you think. It's like It's kind of got the darker roots because... He's out in the sun so much that it's like bleached the like ends of it lighter. Yeah. It's flowing locks. It's he, it, yeah. It's poofy eighties hair, but at the same time like nineties grunge hair. It's very it's yeah. very versatile. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can it can play both roles. <laughs> and he doesn't and like he, you know, Patrick Swayze is always in good versatile. shape, but this one he's like thinner and toned. Like he doesn't look like he's like this isn't Roadhouse shape no. but he's just like really like he has no body fat on him no he looks he's so in shape he kind of looks unhealthy yeah that's a weird thing to say but it does mm-hmm. um this movie was maybe influenced by the book but yeah there was a book well that's not a book called point break but it was another no. book where the guy uh he goes like quote unquote undercover with a surfer crowd yeah. to learn about who murdered his sister. Well, I looked for the book. I couldn't find it. Uh, whatever. I'm sure you listeners can find it faster than me because mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to look. It was. Uh, this is a. This is a cult favorite too. But I, mm-hmm. I think this movie's too good to be a cult movie. Yeah. It's. it's, yeah, like, say it's that. It made too much money. Eighty-five million. Yeah. Because I, I I heard a lot of people say this is a cult a cult classic. I'm like, you made eighty-five million dollars. Yeah, it'd be like saying like the you know something like the Matrix is a cult movie. Um, that's a monster, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean that's extreme, but like I just think at a certain point when you, when you make like you know when you make your money back, it's usually not a cult classic. Yeah, it's, that's a good know. rule of thumb. Surfing is this is my note. Surfing is hard. Swayze broke four of his ribs during yeah. uh, one of his shoots uh, surfing. So. Yeah, and they all took lessons in mm-hmm. uh, Hawaii before. And it was nowhere near enough, they said. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, is why you can clearly tell, like, uh, especially for Swayze because of the broken ribs, yeah. there's like his stunt double playing his day is playing him in some of the shots. Yeah, he's. I bet that there was a stunt double, the same guy the entire time during the chase. Yeah, because they're both that very lean, mm-hmm. lean and muscular, and honestly, it looks like it is Patrick Swayze. Yeah, I mean, it's not yeah. like it's a completely different looking person, or in some cases where they have somebody of a different sex <laughs> yeah. being a stunt person. It's yeah, it's a close, you know, same type of hair, and it's probably his own hair, you know, all that sort of stuff. I love that when there's a. There's a female like uh, action star, and mm-hmm. when they do a stunt that she can't do, and they and they get like the smallest man they can, and you can <laughs> yeah. clearly tell it's a dude in a wig. Yeah, it's so funny. Speaking of, yeah, <laughs> I just saw that in Blade Runner. Um, Daryl Hannah's character when she had to, when he goes into the house of the toy maker, and she's in that like leotard, and she does all the backflips. That's like a it's two stunt people. One is a, a female. But she was doing this, they were shooting it and doing so many shots that she got so tired, they had to dress up another stunt guy in a wig to do it over and over because she was doing the violent shaking on the ground and doing all those shots where she lands on Deckard's like yeah. shoulders. They did that shot like, they took like a hundred or something takes, so she got so well, tired that Ridley she couldn't Scott. do it. He's, yeah, He's insane. So because yeah. of that, they had to get two stunt people to yeah. do that. Um, okay, so uh, we already knew this. They never went to Australia at the end. It was Oregon. Mm-hmm. Uh, we knew it was directed by uh, Bigelow, the wife of James Cameron. 
Which I, I hate that when people mention Catherine Bigelow, they always have to say was married to James Cameron. Yeah, she, like, she's won a fucking Oscar. She she can be on her own. Yeah, she's done she's done great stuff. Yeah, she yeah. doesn't need to have him uh, you know attached. And they've been divorced since like the mid nineties. They it's got uh, right after production. They yeah. got divorced. So ninety two ish. Yeah, I think it's funny that they had their movies come out in the same month of the same year. Mm-hmm. Point Break and T two. Mm-hmm. That's pretty crazy. And they're both top 5 of the month. It's like it's like the Terminator terminated their marriage or something. Hey. Hey. I wonder how hard it is to be married. I won't though, be to... back yeah. to this marriage. Alva. <laughs> but he did produce Strange Days which was like made in 98. Oh, weird. Well, I guess they yeah. I guess they're still friends. So, that's good. Well, I mean, yeah, getting jobs can getting good jobs can be hard. Uh, I'm sure as a female director at that time period, yeah. so it's just like, I'll bite the bullet. Mm-hmm. And maybe they were friends. Who knows? Maybe maybe they left of like, we just can't be together. Maybe that was inspiration for some of the dialogue in Titanic or something. It's like it's like Bodhi and like trying to be a normal person. It just can't happen. Yeah. They, those two things can't. Can't blend. go in a cage, man. Can't be in a cage. <laughs> Marriage is a cage. Can't do that, man. Can't do it. Um. Swayze is in the chase scene. We knew that. Johnny Utah's name was based off Joe Montana. We knew that. Yep. And there was a remake. But before the remake in 2015, there was basically an earlier remake called Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah. Which cracked me up. I didn't know that until I did the when we watched that. The guy pointed that out. And you're like, yeah, that's it's like the same kind of plot. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love it. So let's... Uh, well, there's also Point Break Live. They did a live stage oh, yeah. production, yeah, you found and that one. Um, they would essentially cut someone from the crowd to play Keanu Reeves' character, and he would read from a cue card, and the other actors would shuffle him around on stage, and it would just be, and it was a parody. It was like a comedy parody, but it did run, and there was even like a run from like 2007 to 2016 or something. I just feel like that's so fun. Oh, yeah. Like, the movie's just popular enough for everyone to see it, mm-hmm. but also obscure enough so when they would, you know, point out, I was like, we're going to do the Point Break, you know, like, live show, people would be like, oh, that's that's awesome. <laughs> I haven't seen that in such a long time, mm-hmm. but it was so good. You know, they get that kind of conversation. But uh, let's move on to the museum. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you. This is the part of the show where we go out in the forest of film or in the jungle of film and bring something back just like Indy. Good or bad, it's going in our museum. Uh, I'll let you go second. Okay. Unless you're ready. I don't know. No, no, I need to do final thoughts on it. Uh, So I'm going to put in the entire chase scene. I was so impressed that I stopped the movie, rewound it, and well, well I didn't rewind. Uh, I was watching, when I did this, it was on the DVD, so I'm sorry. Um, I'm not a purist in the VHS. Um, <laughs> Can't mess well, up the tape, man. Well, once I found out there was no trailers on this, I stopped watching it in my back room, and I just moved to the front so uh, Sarah could watch. Oh, okay. Um, so we watched it on Blu-ray, the like 2011 Blu-ray, with great special features, by the way. Um but yeah, I stopped it, went back to the beginning chapter and watched it again. It's so impressive. And it's so fast. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of like the Born, is it the Supremacy? I can't remember which Born yeah. I did a movie, but when the guy runs and jumps off the building with him into the window, it was yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's it reminded me of that where it's like really long continuous, the camera's like right behind him or right in front of him and he runs by. It's yeah, it's very I don't know how it's they very, I it's the high it, octane yeah. of like you know goes with the rest of the movie that way. Pedal to the metal, high octane, <laughs> total like late eighties rock and roll, Motley Crue, Guns and Roses. Speaking of those, pretty good soundtrack on this. Yeah, we had Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was our other ones? We had um, who did the Nobody Rat. Rides for Free? Rat. Rat. Yeah. I don't know who That's they the are. credits. Yeah, I know their name. I've heard their music. Yeah, there's it there's yeah. they are that band where you're like, "Oh, they did this? Oh, they did that?" Yeah. Yeah. And then we had I Want You by the Concrete Blonde. 
Um, that was the called, creeper just, scene. Yeah, that's the creeper scene. It's just called Concrete Blonde, not The Concrete Blonde. Uh, that's an interesting band name. Yeah. Why the fuck are they called Concrete Blonde? This little girl that's like, uh, she's moved on in her life now. She's in the corporate life, the hustle and bustle of the concrete jungle. Maybe. I don't know. That kind of sounded like it might work. Yeah. <laughs> just, but there's a lot of other that. rock and roll um, <clears throat> songs in here. Very good soundtrack for what this movie is. Yeah. Uh, all right. John, the visitor's wing is getting filled up. What do you got? I'm going to put uh, uh, Lori Petty in that dress in the museum. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You're going total. You're going total Keanu creep. Keanu creep, yeah. Yeah. In the Keanu creep wing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a wax figure of him staring at you seductively when you walk in. This movie is just like everyone's so damn good looking. Yeah. It's, it's stupid. And uh, I honestly don't know which one's better looking. I I think it's Patrick Swayze, but Tyler. Tyler's right behind. Tough call. Tough call. Because that mold's that's impressive. A, that's argumentatively between shot to shot almost. Some shots you're like, her. Some shots you're like, yeah, him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if we could have got more shots of him actually surfing. Yeah. Maybe that would have done it. Because that would have put him over the top. I don't mm-hmm. know, though. Like, all the skydiving. Yeah, because he actually did the skydiving. Yeah. Oh, When I was reading that, he... Because obviously... Like when you see them skydiving, he's the only like character really doing it. And then it's like ground shots where they're like on cranes doing that, you know, yeah. for everything else. But they for a while had him sign a uh like they made him quit skydiving for insurance. Yeah, yeah. And then they were like, Well, actually we need some shots with you, so they like let him do it again. And yeah, I think they scenes. warned him though, like you're not covered from the insurance on this. Like he had mm. to sign a waiver. Yeah. So. Maybe that's what that was, yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, this movie is great. Highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. Uh, highly recommend it on VHS. Try to find the one that has some trailers on it because this one doesn't. But get the 2011 Blu-ray. Get the 2009 remake, Fast and the Furious. Was that 2009? No, that was before that. 2002? 2009 was when, yeah. yeah. Oh, when when, did when that is the start? first Fast and the Furious? It's got to be early 2000s, right? I have not seen the 2015 Point Break remake. Uh, no, neither have I. 2001 was the first one. Really? I knew it was early 2000s. Yeah. I don't know why I said 2009 at first. Um, well, I'm sure there was one that year. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, 2015 was the actual remake, which I've never seen. Mm-hmm. Forgot it even existed until right. you brought it up. Right. Yeah, when he said we were going to do this, I was like, oh, yeah, there's the other one. I go, what, wait, which one are we doing? <laughs> I assumed this yeah, one, but yeah. I just want to make sure. Good assumption. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, that'll end it for this week. You can uh, hear us on iTunes, YouTube. You can subscribe on either of them. We also have Podbean. A lot of ways to get into your head, or we'll listen. But we'll get into your head, too. YouTube, Um, Google. Yep, hopefully in a couple months uh, we'll have Matt returning from his his avalanche of Windy City Mm Horrorama stuff. But until then, we'll be doing a lot of guests. Uh, I think John will be returning for Strange Days. Yeah. So we'll have that. Uh, That'll be interesting to see how much she's changed. Yeah. Because Strange Days also is a long one. Yeah, okay. So she she does not shy away from length of a film. Um, That that could have gone either way. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll let that one slide. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) so uh, come back next week for Strange Days. Strange Day, I don't remember. And uh, remember to be kind. Rewind. Hey, do you guys like horror movies? I do. Do they always have to be good movies? No way. I prefer them to be crap, personally. Well, then you guys are in luck because Horror Movie Night is your expert podcast on both horror movies, good, bad, and gooey. It's just a show of three friends. Brother. Yeah, two brothers and a friend, I, I think you would call But we're also, we're all friends here, you know. We're friends, we we're all around. friends here. We're yeah. friends. We goof around, but we... <laughs> We talk about we talk about movies, but we normally don't actually talk about movies, which is kind of weird. It's, it's a weird dynamic. You have to really listen to understand it. But we put together a show every Friday morning. You can find our show HMNPodcast.com. Uh, we're part of the Geekscape Network. We are 
you know, we're good guys. Just check us out. We're good, silly guys. We're, we're fun. Please like me. Please. <laughs> That's pretty Please. much the impetus of everything we do is to be accepted. We want to yeah. be loved. HMMPodcast.com. <laughs>